Good day to you my fellow endoskeletons and welcome to the first in a series of tutorials to help you learn about the spaceship designer in Starbase. In today's video we'll be going over the UI and what you need to know to use all the tools at your disposal. Now let's get to it. Before we get started I have to remind everyone that this game is in early access and literally everything is subject to change. What works today may be replaced with something better next week. Icons and UI elements may be different, but the tools should be the same, if not better. So please keep that in mind. So starting off outside the editor, you will need to find this ship design workshop building. You can find these at any of the origin starter stations. They all have a common look and because they are so large, they are easy to find. A key giveaway is the large hologram on top of the building. Next, just head down into the large opening on either side and in front of the blue instant boxes, you will find the terminal screens. This terminal will normally have a single option to start a private session. But if you're in a group, there will be an option to start a group session where they can join you. Or if they're already in a group session at this specific terminal, then this will show a join group session button instead. Once you're in, you will have the empty new file view and the default layout. We have the top menu bar. This provides you with the file menu allowing you to load and save blueprints, reset your camera, and reset the panel layout should something go wrong or become a mess. You can also load example dev ships, and I'll load the game's hauler ship as a demonstration. You have the selection menu, which I think is probably underused, but can be useful and faster than using the asset locks. More on the locks a little bit later. You also have a settings button, which will shortcut you straight to the designer specific settings. While settings are mostly personal preference, I highly recommend setting the default placement distance to two or three. This will save you so much scrolling as a new object appears much closer to your camera view instead of further away. You can also reset to default at any time at the bottom of this menu. And lastly here there is also camera controls. To the right of the menu buttons we have a row of icons. These are all for the different floating windows. So if you close one accidentally, you can bring it back very easily. If you hover over any of these, its name should pop up and the icons with green corners means that they are already active. And we will go through these different windows in a moment. The last few are save blueprint, delete selection, undo and redo buttons. I've never used these as the keyboard shortcuts of control S and the delete key make for much easier use. The same goes for the undo and redo buttons with control Z and control Y being used as standard. Past this we have the module buttons. Create module from selection, add selection to module and remove selection from module. After creating a module a fourth button will appear. This button also appears after selecting an existing module and this is to save a module for later use. These will appear in a my modules folder in the asset browser. Modules can make it quick and easy to select pre-built and pre-bolted selections of ships to speed up design creation. A popular one I recommend is thrusters. Make one of every tier, bolt them together and save it as a module. And then you can just copy these where required. Next we have the button for test flight. Note the keyboard shortcut shown here is F5. This will spawn you into a small instance version of the station. The main difference is that you cannot crash into the station as nothing else has a hitbox here. This is good to test if your ship can fly straight or not and if the controls are as you want them. Here is the show detached object button. This is a must for finding those loose unbolted things on your ship as you will not be able to buy your ship with loose parts. When activated it shows these parts in red. Next up we have the show ship orientation button. Pressing this will hide your ship and show a compass for forward and up. Note this is optional but recommended as it determines the ship's spawn orientation. The last two buttons we have here are the gizmo orientation. This is more of an advanced tool that will let you move things along the axis of an object and not the world. Very useful if you have any objects on a non 90 degree rotation as shown here. The auto snapping button is next and it does exactly that. Just know that unlike outside the ship designer where snapping is just the C button, to toggle it in here it's shift and the C button. However holding C while moving something will temporarily disable snapping. Lastly in the top right we have the visualization tools drop down which can turn on and off the center of mass and center of thrust visualizations. This is nothing super fancy yet as it's just two colored boxes but try to line them up through your ship as best as possible so they are in front of one another. Note that they don't need to overlap in absolute position. Another note here is that the center of thrust can be for the whole ship by default or for selected thrusters just by selecting some. This can be very useful for balancing your stray thrust around your center of mass. Getting back to the different window buttons now and the first is the asset browser here on the left. You can see it has a search bar and if you need to look up a specific component quickly this can be used. 
otherwise we have a set of different folders for components and these can be opened to reveal either more folders or the components themselves and the names are pretty self-explanatory. Next to each main folder there is a small eye and a padlock icon. The eye is used for turning off visibility of that type of component and could be considered similar to layers if you are used to working on 3D software. Looking at our example ship I can turn several bits transparent with this tool but note they are still selectable and that's where the padlock comes in. You can turn off selection of these parts or interaction with the padlock and it turns red showing that these components can no longer be selected. This works independently of the transparency setting. I find it useful when editing a ship to use both. For example when changing something that is behind some plating you can make it both transparent and lock it so it's like it's not even there. Another neat trick you can do with this is hold down the alt key and press the I or the padlock to hide or lock every layer except for the one you are clicking. I use this mostly to isolate just the plating or the beams for when I'm changing materials or painting. Further down the asset list some pre-built modules by the devs have been made for your use and it's as easy as clicking on them as you would a normal asset and placing them in your scene. Below this you can find your own save modules that I mentioned earlier. Another feature about this window is that you can right click on any object and get a small option pop up. This will let you view icons instead of a list if you prefer to select things visually. Once the icons have been selected you can choose to either have them big or small. All windows can be resized as well either the traditional way like you do on your computer or by holding right click anywhere in the window and dragging. The next window buttons are for the toolbox and tool options. By default you will find these at the bottom and the bottom right of your screen respectively and the current default size is not big enough and will be hiding the decal button. These two windows are used in tandem and the tool options change depending on what tool you have selected. The list of tools are as follows. The select and move tool, select and rotate tool, selection tool, the bolt tool, cable and pipe tool, durability tool, snapping tool, the socket tool, the paint tool, the auto boat tool, the material tool, welding tool and finally the decal tool. Most of these use the keyboard shortcuts of 1 to 0 across the top of your keyboard as seen by hovering over each tool through their tooltip. Some tools like the cable and pipe tool have tool options that will appear in the option window. You can see that to use either cables or pipes you will have to switch between them here. Also note that cables and pipes can currently clip through any object. When using the move and rotate tools don't waste time jumping between the tools. You can quick rotate 90 degrees around each axis with tapping the shortcut keys of X, Y or Z and these will match the global X, Y and Z gizmo. You can also hold these shortcuts down and mouse drag for a little finer control. This tip is probably one I use the most. You can also use the move tool to clone an object. This is quicker than constantly going to the asset browser to bring in them one at a time. Just hold shift and move the object and you'll create a copy. This is great for perfectly aligning objects up next to each other and is much quicker than just copying and pasting objects. You can also rotate objects while you copy them using the previous tip. This is great for copying things from one side of the ship to the other since there is sadly no mirror mode in the designer yet. The durability tool has two modes for checking your ship. The first will show you what parts need more bolts or have issues by flagging them red whilst the rest of your ship is shown in green. Please note if you click on any of the small red or orange boxes that appear in this mode it will tell you what is wrong. These are mostly stress related errors but for the most part as long as your warp class is above 1 you are fine to fly this ship. The other mode will show you the stress levels in the beam system so you can find and remove redundant beams or see if there is any more needed where it's overloaded. I'll cover this tool more thoroughly in a future video. The snapping tool is a great feature and a godsend when auto snapping just won't work for you. Select the piece you want to move, hit 7 and this will bring up all the snap points on the part that you have. Click one of these orange dots then hover over the part you want to snap it to. This part's orange dots will come up and then you will just need to click one and as long as there is nothing else blocking this part it will snap into place. If it can't fit the snap will fail and it will move back to where it was selected originally. The socket tool can be used to run cable or pipe tool through objects but most people use this in single mode to mount buttons to and then wire to those. It's super simple to do and the socket is nearly never noticeable. The paint tool and the material tools work in the exact same way. The brush has two options, one for depth and one for width. Selecting materials must be done with care though as this alone can break your ship as you can paint your beams with a weaker material. Again I'll be covering all the materials and the use of this tool in a future video. The paint tool however is harmless so go ham with it. 
and the paint tool also has a separate option for painting the decals. The autobolt tool has multiple options too. This can be used to bolt everything in your scene or limited to just the selected pieces. This tool can also be used to unbolt with the same options. Do not rely on this tool as your only method of bolting and always check the work that it does with the durability tool. The welding tool simply binds two beams together. I recommend using this tool with only the beams visible so you can see them all. This tool as well as beams will be covered in greater detail in the next tutorial. Lastly, the decal tool can be a tricky one. Once activated, you can place decals from the asset browser as well as select and move others. The scroll wheel will change the size and holding alt and scrolling will rotate them. Unlike the normal part selection, holding shift will not select multiple decals. In this mode, you have to hold control for this. The next window button is the multi-user undo system. It sits over on the right hand side of the screen and keeps track of every action you have taken, allowing you to undo a lot of actions or pick a specific action to go to it directly. I've had this list up to thousands of actions and while I haven't tried to undo everything in that case, I've certainly gone back over 100 steps or so and I've found it very useful for when you realize you've gone wrong just a little while ago. The material windows button opens up the same window as when you select the materials tool and you can keep this closed if you are not actively working on materials. Next is the scene view window button. This tool is a bit of a mystery to me as I have not found a use for it in over 2000 hours of gameplay. So this one can pretty much be ignored, but check it out if you want. The properties window is next. This is another one on by default and sits at the center right of your screen. This window is important for virtually every single device in the game. And the first thing you should do is swap it with the MUUS window and make it bigger. Here you can see the name of the object as well as any of the values and fields that you can change. You'll be using this mostly to change field names to match buttons or controls. These fields are the exact same fields that you can read in game with the universal tool. The on all script editor is our next window. I personally leave this one closed as you can open it again from the properties menu of a YOLO chip as shown here. This window also needs to be made a lot bigger. The building budget window is one I keep open at all times. This key window lists every limit you can't go over when designing your ship. These limits turn yellow when nearing the limit and red when it's at or over the limits. Normally the game won't let you go over the limits and will instantly undo any action that does. However, some dev ships can be loaded that have too many decals already. Paint colors is the next button and again another replicated one from the toolbox. Another hugely important window is the material cost. This will tell you the total cost in ore and credits to build your ship from the designer. The cost can be made cheaper just like in the ship shops if you already have any pre-built components for it and these are selected at the top of the list. Since crafting is free, this will save you the most on the construction credit cost. And again, anything you don't have enough of will be listed in red here as well. If you are designing a hauler or mining ship, the next window is for you. This is the virtual mass window. It will simulate different amounts of mass in your cargo crates, and this will change the speed of your ship and sometimes help you find weak spots that don't show up when the ship is empty. Carrying the heaviest ores will add a lot of extra stress to your ship. Checking it with this can save you a lot of heartache later on when you find out your ship is too slow when loaded or breaks apart with too much mass added. Virtual mass can only be used in the designer and there is no in-world tool for this. Finally, our last tool is the thruster renaming tool. For the most part on ships, you will want to give each thruster a separate and unique name and then match this to a list of names in the main flight computer. This tool can do this automatically for you, but for larger ships, I recommend doing it manually as you will be grouping thrusters together for a better flight performance. And again, I'll be covering this on another video later on. And that's the overall interface we have for designing a ship. I hope you found this useful and tune into the next one. I'll be going into depth around many other things used in putting together a ship, so stay tuned. I'll be keeping all the ship designer tutorials in their own playlist, but to make sure you never miss out, do please hit that bell after subscribing for notifications for all my videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Kenator, out.